Good morning everyone and welcome to Cooking School in a Box presented by Young Women on the Move with guest chef Kalika Simmons preparing cookies today and two recipes that are going to be presented will be shortbread cookies and chocolate chip cookies. Wonderful recipes to prepare at home. Our guest today will be Representative Sharice Davids who will ju jump in, help out, and give us a few pointers on entrepreneurship and to help young women on the move or anybody on the move for that matter. So with that said, let's jump into those recipes and have some fun. So I'm going to be all wound up after this. I have started my shortbread cookie. My butter has been sitting out, room temperature, so that way it's easier for me to uh, mix it by hand. I'm using a whisk for this, and I'm using powdered sugar, okay? Powdered sugar is sugar, of course, that has been pulverized and then mixed with cornstarch. And cornstarch is really gonna help you with the texture of a cookie that's just nice and nice and tender and I've already measured out my powdered sugar this was 120 grams which is roughly a cup and a half cup and a third um, I really 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 encourage you guys to get out there and buy yourselves a scale you can buy them for pretty darn cheap at most stores like a Kohl's or a Tuesday morning you can get them online for pretty darn cheap they're really gonna take your baking to the next level all right, so this is mixed, and I really want to beat this until everything is 100% incorporated. You can kind of see it's really light. It's almost like I'm making a frosting. Egg, they've been sitting out at room temperature too. Just gonna cracky cracky. Egg in. Very careful so I don't get any shells. I've got my trash bowl down here. Boom. Gonna just mash it a little, just to break up that yolk, and I'm gonna stir slowly. And what does an egg do in a cookie? What do you think? Well, I'll tell you. It adds flavor. It adds color, because there's that nice fat in there. Excuse me, my mask is falling down. That's not good. And you wanna do that until that's 100% incorporated. Again, I am keeping my wrist straight and the bicep right here is doing all my work. So I've got everything all mixed, beautiful, nice and yellow, nice and homogenous. Do we remember what that word means? Homoge homogenous, all the same. All right, now I'm going to get my scale, I'm going to add my leaveners. Do we remember leaveners? Our baking powder is our double action baking powder. It's activated with heat instead of just acid. So it's activated with moisture, activated with acid. And now I'm going to add my flour. Tear out my scale. Just going to scoop it. This is flour that's already been sifted. And I'm just going to measure everything directly into the bowl. And this is 270 grams. That is roughly, ooh, a little too much. That is roughly two cups and a quarter, roughly. And then we're just gonna mix by hand. All right. So this is just some gentle mixy mixy. And we're gonna have some fun with the shortbread. You guys like to have fun, right? I sure do. Shortbread is one of those cookies that you can really, really go crazy with. So I am just mixing this until it kind of comes together. And then I'm going to take my nice clean hands and I'm going to put a glove on it, a pair of gloves.
All right, gloves on. If you don't have gloves, it's fine. Just make sure you wash your hands super thoroughly. Scrape off all of this. And we're just gonna knead this by hand until it's all sort of incorporated. I wanna get everything all together. And then I'm gonna divide this dough in half, okay? And I'm gonna color one half of it. What? So first things first, I have to measure how much this dough weighs in order for me to, uh, in order for me to make sure that I get it exactly half. So this is by grams, all base 10. All right. Okay, 565, so that in half. What is 500 in half? That is 250. What is 65? Anyone? 60 is 30, right? So I basically want 300, uh, 200 and 80, 280 and change, basically because this scale doesn't go that, that accurate. Okay, so this is already over there. And I'm going to add a liquid dye. Now I am adding a little bit more liquid, so that just means I need to be conscious of that and add just the teensiest bit more flour. It's like not even a spoonful, not even a tablespoon, just call it a teaspoon more flour, just to help soak up this excess liquid, make sure we're getting the same consistency on that dough. All right. We're gonna do green, because that's my favorite color. I'm gonna use a lot, because I really like a bright, bright color. So I'm using my glove, because that is, that is to make sure that my skin doesn't get all green. All right. All right, and that is, this beautiful, non-marbled, bright, green color. Amazing. Now, what do we do with this? Well, first things first, we chill it, right? Because I can't really roll it out in this condition. It's way too soft. When I do roll it out, what I'm going to do, and remember, this stage is totally optional. This is just if you want to have some fun with it. If you just want it to be plain, I've already straightened out some parchment sheets right here. I've greased them a little bit with pan spray. This is called marbling. So I'm gonna take my two lumps of clay. And this is a technique I kind of learned when I, did I say two lumps of clay or did I say two lumps of dough? I think I said two lumps of clay. Cause I'm thinking about clay because I do pottery on the side. It's my side hustle. So if I have two different doughs of different colors right there okay thank you chef gary gonna get my new gloves on this is a good idea to change gloves so right here you can kind of see i've got both doughs right there and i'm really just gonna push this over onto the other one. And I'm gonna cut this in half. Boom, right there. And I'm just gonna pat it. I'm not gonna knead it, I'm just gonna pat it. Who remembers this kind of technique when I was uh, doing the biscuits? Anyone? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pat it one more time. All right. Now, I am just going to roll it a little and I'm not really going to handle it too much because I do want the colors to have the same kind of integrity but I'm just going to be basically rolling it back and forth between this thing which is just parchment paper you can get it anywhere most grocery stores carry it all right and when we slice it it's going to be a really 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 pretty color but first, I have to chill this. I like the freezer for an hour, or this for an hour and a half to two hours. Chef Gary, can I please have you trade me? Because through the magic of television, of course, I have prepared 
Another fun thing you can do, thank you very much, and if you could put that in there, perfect. Another fun thing you can do, you can make shapes with this. So, I've wrapped it around, so it's gonna look like a green apple when it's cut. So here's what I'm gonna do next. I have my cutting board, and I've got some chocolate chips here. What am I gonna do with these chocolate chips? Well, we're, they're gonna be the seeds of the apple, so I'm just gonna cut them, cut them in half, because these are gonna be a little smaller, just with a nice sharp knife. Don't have your chocolate cold, guys. I don't know if you guys keep your chocolate chips in the freezer, but my husband really likes to keep chocolate chips in the freezer, and I hate it because that means I can't work with them. And now I'm just going to slice it. Nice slices. And this is chilled for, gosh, I made this two or three hours ago, so it's been chilling for quite some time. Obviously, the longer you chill it, the better it is. And I'm just doing even slices on this. And I'm going to reshape the bottoms a little bit so it really looks like an apple. Here we go. So, here we go. They're looking very apple-like. They're looking like cute little green apples. On here. And I preheated my oven, now that I know I'm going to bake it, I preheated my oven to 325. 325 degrees Fahrenheit, or I believe that's 170 degrees Celsius for any of you cool cats that are on the metric system. If you're not, you should be, because the whole rest of the world's doing it. You don't want to be out when it's uh, trendy, don't you? You want to be in on the, all the cool and latest trends. All right, and then we're just gonna take chocolate chips and I'm gonna press them in to the middle like this to make the seeds of my apple. How cute is that, right? Now, if you wanted to make a different shape, like let's say you wanted to do strawberries, all you do is you dye all of it red, okay, and then you roll your shape into kind of that uh, strawberry kind of oval shape in a big log. And then you press white chocolate chips into there. Boom, right there. So these are super cute. And you kind of get the idea of there. So, Jeff Gary, if you would just stick these in the fridge for me, so I'm gonna have another magic television moment right here. So over here, yep, uh, those are gonna bake for 15 minutes at 325. And when they are all out and done, we are gonna have something that looks a little bit like those. Yep, check these out. How cute are these? They look like little apple slices. Super fun, right? And this, these are filled with raspberry jam because they're seasonal right now. These are an amazing spiral cookie. That, and uh, one is green and the other dough is just chock full of sprinkles. So the sky is really, really, really the limit when you come, uh, when it comes to shortbread cookies. But that is all done. My shortbread cookies are done for that kind of thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and work on my chocolate chip, if that's all right with y'all. I've already got my butter. It's six ounces, already room temperature, wonderful. Some excitement is happening off camera, so. Everybody, please welcome Hello. Representative Sharice Davis Hi. of Kansas. How's everybody doing today? Hi, everybody. So um, you're a representative of the state of Kansas. For the third district, For yeah, the third district. yeah. Okay, Which fantastic. is all of Johnson and all of Wyandotte. All right, and we are in Wyandotte County right now. So uh, she has very generously agreed to help out uh, young women on the move over here. And uh, as you can see, yeah, as you can see, we are both wearing masks, you know, because uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's good manners at this point, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, healthy. It's healthy for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Better safe than sorry, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, if you don't mind, 
Yeah, do you? Yeah, I'd like to I wash your hands, please. Okay, perfect. Yeah, oh, yeah. here's the... Yeah, there's the soap. Okay. So she's going to wash her hands. I'm just going to continue whipping this. You are going to be making some chocolate chip cookies today. Oh, yeah. Some of my faves. Me too. I love chocolate chip cookies. Oh, me too. I was explaining how um, you got to have all your ingredients already set out. Uh -huh. And this is called mise en place. And it's just a good idea to be organized. All right. Perfect. And there should be a towel. There's some uh, microfiber towels oh, right I there. See. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. It's good to use reusable stuff, right guys? Yes. Yeah. Only got one planet. Got to take care of it. All right. So this butter is super soft. Representative Davis, can I hand this off to you? Yes. That's sugar right there. Okay. I've already measured that out. So go ahead and just dump the whole thing in. Okay. And we are using white sugar just because it's easily accessible. Yep. And we can, I'll take that. Thank you. And you're just going to start gently stirring that first. Okay. Gently. And then once it's kind of kind of disappearing in there, then uh -huh. you can just beat the bejesus out of it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So. Yeah. I definitely need uh, direction because I'm not much of a Not a You don't go to a lot home? That's no. okay. Yeah. It seems like it's got to be pretty empowering to be able to like make your own, make your own stuff. Oh, and yeah. I mean, it's, it's very empowering. Oh, yeah. And now. How's that? Yeah, it's great. So now you can really just boom, 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 like go crazy like that. Okay. And you know what? You've already got the technique mastered because you're keeping your wrist straight and you're using your bicep. Oh. Yeah. You're a natural. She's a natural, you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing. Yeah. And you just really just beat the bejesus out of that. Just really go to town with it. So I love chocolate. Can I consider this my workout for the you day? You can consider okay, your workout perfect. for the day. Perfect. You're burning off all the calories that you would need to eat I'm these. Gonna, when I eat yeah, these, yeah. It balances out. Oh, uh, Felica, Chef Gary here. Yes, Chef Gary. And, uh, Charisse, uh, we have a question. Why did you want to be here today? Oh, well, I didn't know that I was going to get to bake cookies, but I was really excited when I found out that um, you all were helping people learn how to cook. Yes. Um, especially during this time and doing it virtually, especially during this time when we've got just so many folks are getting, um, you know, they're going to the grocery store, having stuff delivered, or they're, um, I actually got to participate in the um, drive through when folks were coming to pick up produce and stuff nice. the other day. And I just was thinking, this seems like a really awesome, uh, awesome, like, class for people to be able to take. And... I know I needed to learn how to make cookies. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, you are right, though. On that note, it's very, very empowering. Because, I mean, you see where there are no cookies in your house, and you can just be like, that won't do. Yeah. There needs to be cookies. Yeah. All right, let me see that. How do I know when it's ready? It is ready now, and you can see it because the sugar has kind of, it hasn't exactly disappeared, uh -huh. but it looks like it's just kind of a lumpy butter, like yeah. a little bit. So, oh, yeah, it does. It so, looks very much like a... Yeah, the idea is you want the sugar to dissolve. Okay. Yeah, so it looks pretty good. So now we're going to add in an egg. I'm going to go ahead and crack that in for you. Just break it on a flat surface. Wa-bam, right there. I've got a trash bowl right there. Therese, do you know how you can tell if eggs are fresh? No, how can I tell? So from here, you can tell this egg is pretty fresh because the yolk is standing straight up in a dome in there. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if we can kind of see it there, but uh, that's one way you can tell. And also the uh, albumin of the white is kind of still all together. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like one, it looks like, like it's, it's just like a little clump. And like a little sack in a way. Yeah. But that's how you know the egg is fresh. Oh, good. Right? I had this very question literally a week ago. No. That's cool. And I was asking some of my coworkers, so am I gentle with this? Yeah, or do yeah, I... just start, like, start by stabbing it a little bit just to break the yolk. Don't be afraid. It's okay, it's, it's broken. Not... Yeah, okay, and then just stir gently. And it's the same thing before. Once it gets kind of incorporated and once you're sure you're not going to splash yourself. Oh, yeah. That's when you can really just boom, 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 boom. Go, okay. Go crazy with it. Okay. Yeah, so um, another way you can tell an egg is fresh, you can stick it like a whole egg like this uh -huh. in a glass of water. And depending on if it floats or not, that'll tell you how fresh it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So a couple of my coworkers and I uh -huh. were uh, having a Zoom meeting. Okay. And it was getting close to lunchtime. So I was like, okay, I need to eat something. And I was... And the expiration date or the best buy date right was maybe that day or the day before right so i was a little bit nervous and all of literally all three of us were like 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Isn't there some kind of rule about water? Yeah, and we didn't one. know what it was. Okay. Yeah, you just you put it in the glass of water, and uh, if it floats or not, okay. depending on how, depending on how much that is. That's looking great. Yeah, yeah, just gonna go a little bit more of it, and that's why a machine is sometimes good. But I also wanted to show you guys. Hey, you know what? You can do it without a machine. We're not actually gonna mix these in. I'm gonna show you a different trick to make them look even prettier. Oh, yes, okay. and also to make sure each cookie gets the same amount of chocolate chips. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now it's looking great. I'm just gonna show everybody there. Looking really light in color. It's really the color that you're looking for. Okay. Again, the sugar's totally dissolved. Yeah. That thing's totally, you can hear that. I don't know if we can hear that with our mics, but you can, that lovely flop. Okay. So now I'm gonna have you please get the uh, baking powder and the baking soda. Okay. Baking okay. soda. Uh huh. And I know this one's the baking soda versus this, this one because it's flour, and this is baking because it says baking soda. Yes, sure does. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. You're like that's flour. That All is right. flour, and that's the container for the baking soda. And you should have some measuring spoons right next to you. And we want a half a teaspoon of each. Okay. So I want a half a teaspoon of baking powder, and I want a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon. Yep, that's the one. One slash two TSP. Yep, that's the Got one. Got it. Now, we talked a little bit about leaveners and chemical leaveners and the history about them in our pancake class. I don't even know what the word leavener means. It means it makes it go up. Oh. Yeah, wow. this is a leavener. Okay. It, that's, uh, that's the action that it does. So just so scoop it. Okay. Uh-huh. And then you're going to just with your finger. Yep. Boom. Oh, okay. Perfect. You just right in there. In? Yep. Just dump it in. Yep, there you go. Okay. Well, bam. Perfect. Going to do the exact same thing with that baking soda. Amazing. Oh, wow. This one's a lot less uh, yeah. fluffy looking. Yeah, and that's because it is the baking soda is a single act leavener. That means it is activated by moisture, but specifically acid. So go ahead and just put that right on the scale. Do I leave yep. the spoon in? Leave the spoon in. It's totally fine. And we're going to tear it out, which means zeroing it out. And I'm going to make sure it's on ounces because I want ounces. Okay. Can you see? There you go, you can see yeah. the numbers. Zero pounds, zero ounce. Yep, perfect. So go ahead and scoop that flour gently and sprinkle that in. Uh, we are looking for... Are we using all of this flour? Oh, no. Oh. No, no, I just stuck that out for the... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I did make some cookies earlier, so we needed a lot. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah, we are using... Um, we're, you're going to add in until it is 7.5 ounces. 7.5 ounces. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So just, so I just... Yep, sprinkle, sprinkle. And it's good to measure by weight instead of volume because you're always going to get it consistent. Okay, one, two, uh -huh. 2.3. While you're doing that, I'm going to get 3. this 3.3. You said 7.5, 7.5. Okay, 7.5 That's the magic ounces. number. 5, 6.8. We got 7. 7. Perfect. Oh, uh -oh. oh, that's okay. So dump all that in there. Yep, and then just scoop out a little bit. Just until, oh. now just sprinkle a little back in. 7.4. 7.4. It's important to be accurate. Baking is chemistry. Seven. <laughs> Almost. Four. Almost. Four. One. Five. Boom, we got it. All right. All right, uh, now we can go ahead and take this off the scale. We are done with that scale for a while. And you can just, the best way to start with this is just kind of folding it. Okay. And then just kind of push it into itself. Okay. Okay. Representative Dave. Yes? Um, why do you think it's good for young people to learn skills like cooking and entrepreneurship? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, well, there's actually a couple of things. So. Around cooking, I mean, some of what we talked about earlier with um, just feeling empowered yeah. and figuring out how to. Yeah, you can get a with that. Okay, okay. So I got it. I got it in, so it's not gonna. F yep. And you know what? That's actually uh -huh. good right there. Okay. Y you're good. So. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And now, um, but while you were talking, I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, and start portioning. So the, uh, so yes. cooking can help you uh, feel empowered, but also. Um, you know, now that I'm a grown up <laughs> and, uh, I'm completely responsible for taking care of myself. Um, I, I found that the few dishes that I know how to make come in real handy. And then especially during the pandemic, mm 
-hmm. because you know it's um, I try not to eat eat out at restaurants too much to really to save money but um, it's just been really helpful to know how to how to cook at least a few things that I like and then um, so I think that's one of the reasons to learn how to cook and then um, the other thing, I was thinking about entrepreneurship and how actually this is probably a similar kind of thing. Like you, you learn problem solving. I mean, entrepreneurship, so much of entrepreneurship is like problem solving. And, um, you know, you have to do things over and over to learn how to do it. And I think cooking is probably like that. Yes, exactly. Cooking is just messing up so often over and over again until you get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I think entrepreneurship and learning problem solving skills helps you feel empowered too. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting how similar the two can be. Actually, we're about to put on gloves now, oh, but really? um, yes, because this is my trick for getting beautiful chocolate chips, uh, beautiful chocolate chip cookies. So as long as my hands are not physically in the dough, I can just have without gloves. Okay. So That's a good rule too. yeah, the general rule is if you're handling a ready to eat product, like a sandwich or a salad, Use gloves. Okay. And that's what we do in the restaurant industry. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to have you do, actually, I'm going to put on gloves so I can join you. So um, as you saw, I just divvied out lumps. Six cookies. Yep, six cookies. And we're going to work together on this one. I love it. All right. As soon as I get my glove on. Dang it. <laughs> All right. So this is my favorite trick for getting beautiful chocolate chip cookies. I just take a little bit of the chocolate chips right there, uh -huh. and I'm literally just gonna stick them on the outside, like so it looks like a little porcupine. Oh. And the closer the better, because trust me, it, it's, it's all gonna spread out, so it's gonna be fine. Plus you ensure, this is a way to ensure you get the same amount each time. Okay. Now, I get oh. heated about oatmeal raisin cookies, because I don't think they should exist. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I'll say it. Wow. I'd rather be divisive than indecisive because wow. you know what? You bite into an oatmeal raisin cookie thinking it's a chocolate chip. Okay. So you know I don't I mean? disagree with that. Right. I, I, have, I have been the victim <laughs> of, of mistaken identity when it comes to chocolate chip and oatmeal raisin. Right. It's traumatic, isn't it? Especially no. when you're a child. No one, no one wants to think that they're eating chocolate chip and then it's actually oatmeal raisin. Yep, yep. So I can understand that. Hot take I right here, kids. Um, and I also, I know a thing or two about divisiveness. Yeah, And I, I definitely, I can understand how the chocolate chip debate about chewy versus crispy. Uh, or crispy. Or... I mean... You know, yeah. I obviously have my own opinions. Okay. I'm here to listen to everybody else's opinion as well. Right, which is what a good representative is all about. I right. added, I added one of yours. That's okay, that's okay. You know what, we're working together. So this right here, you can chill this. I personally like it better when it is chilled overnight, just like this. You can even freeze these like this, but we're just gonna pop them in the oven right now. So this is going into a hot oven at 325. Chef Gary. Could I please ask you yeah. to set us a timer for 10 minutes? Sure. Thank you. And we can put this in our trash bowl. So you said that you don't really cook a lot at home. Not, I mean, I warm things up a lot. Sure. Hey, that's okay. No, I, no judgment. This is a judgment-free zone. So if you're making noodles, yes. does that count as cooking? Yes. It does. Okay, then I cook yes. a lot. All right. Hey. <laughs> it's funny because uh, last week we had Chef Gary here. He made a pasta dish. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we covered that, the basics of pasta and all that stuff. Oh, good. Yeah, so um, I know how to make a, a spaghetti dish. Great. Um, I add sausage That's okay. to the spaghetti, right. um, Italian sausage, mm -hmm. to add a little bit of, a, a little bit of flavor. Mm -hmm. And I know how to make breakfast burritos. Okay. With, you know, like potatoes Love and... It. Um, I'm not a huge flan fan of a lot of flavoring or spices. Okay. I know, I know. 
Uh, I know. Uh-oh, guys. <laughs> She's like, no, ah! don't say it. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, I do know that other people like those things. So, mm. you know, adding in with the eggs, some potatoes, some sausage or other kind of, you know, uh, meat, and then putting in some peppers or something like that. So what I'm hearing is you like to keep it simple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's, that's like probably a better way to... Uh, baking soda. What's that? I said I'm basic like this baking soda. Ah, ah, or was it the baking, baking soda? No, no, it's the baking soda. Yeah, oh, basic, okay, basic like the baking soda. Do we have a question, Mary Beth? Oh, all, all right. right. Before we close, I have you mentioned that uh, your expertise in martial arts. Oh. Um, I, read, I read this wonderful uh, story about you. There's a question about me doing martial arts. Yeah. Uh, where you approach life with oh, some yeah. of the lessons that you learned in martial arts. Oh, yeah. Is that bird? Could you expand? Yeah. yeah. I'd love to talk about martial arts. Like you take it one step at a time? So, like, learning the foundation and the basics, like, uh, that's something that I feel like when you do that, like, you probably had to learn basics of cooking. Yeah. like how different things interact with each other and it's the same way when you're learning how to punch and kick yeah. like there's basics about how to move your arm and where to keep your hands and yeah. um it's just been like this really interesting like learning how to move my body and also how to recognize that a lot of this stuff is like me pushing myself because when you get tired like you're working out and you get tired and you're like i don't feel like working out today because my legs are sore but like, right. so, if you were, you know, so I've had to, I've had to push myself, yeah. um, especially when you're competing and mm -hmm. um, it's just been so interesting. And I've, I've loved the process of learning martial arts and um, the timer's going off. We're going to oh, see what's yeah. about these cookies I think, I think we're and working out a bunch makes it made it so I could eat more cookies. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, All right, guys. So these, they are brown around the outside. So beautiful. I'm gonna put them right here so we don't burn ourselves. And I don't wanna put it on this because that's plastic and that's gonna melt. Okay. And I don't want that. I don't think you want that either. No. Thank you. Boom, right there. So you see how these, yeah, just anywhere underneath. Okay. Um, you see how these all spread out even though it just looked like a big porcupine? Uh huh. So they won't spread out as much if you have the dough that's cold. And oh, also, yeah, and going back to like, you know, um, kinds of cookies, the reason I chose white sugar okay. is because it's the right kind of sugar that I like because I like a cookie that's kind of thin and crispy. Okay. So what's another kind of sugar that you could use that would make it not thin? So you would use brown sugar, Okay. just 100% brown sugar, um, and that would help keep it more together. Also, oh. if you wanted, say, like a chewy cookie. Yeah. I'm not a big chewy cookie person, oh. but my dad is. I love chewy cookies. You're all about the I'm chewy a chewy things. cookie. Okay, so here's this what, what you do. This if you is want how a chewy we're cookie. different. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. But you know what? We're still, it's okay. Yeah. We can respect each other's differences. We can say, fine for you, not for me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, how you get a chewy cookie is instead of having the butter at room temperature, you okay. actually have the butter melted. Oh, really? Yes. You have the butter melted, and then you stir with a whisk instead of a spatula to start. Okay. And then. You add bread flour instead of all-purpose flour. Because I'm going to watch that. I, I see you're wringing your hands and ready for this, right? So this is about, oh, yeah, and just when you can pick it up, it's ready. Oh. So I'm going to let you have the first one. I'm going to step a little bit oh, away. Yeah. I'll go over here. I'll go over here. Tell you what, I'll go over here, too, and I'll have the small one. So I just want to show it's nice and warm. The inside, so beautiful. You can kind of not see. I don't know how well you can see. Yeah. What do you think? I can keep my job? Yes. This is awesome. Yes. And again, they taste great, just straight like this, but you can have them, you know, just um, chilled and they, they work just fine too. Representative Davis, thank you so much for showing. Oh, thanks for inviting me. I'm so glad I got to be here. Me I, too. Uh, I haven't baked anything in a long time. Well, you're going to go home and do it, aren't you? Yes. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. This has been Cooking School in a Box with Young Women on the Move featuring Chef Kalika and Representative Sharice Davids. Just two bad women. Yeah. That's me on the move, I guess. Yeah, that's us on the move right here. We're basic, just like the baking powder or the baking soda. Dang it. Thank you so much for attending this morning's presentation. Special thanks to Sharice Davids for coming in and helping with our recipes. 
special thanks to Kalika Simmons for a wonderful presentation on how to put together a proper cookie. Next week, I will be presenting an Asian stir fry that is just going to be full of flavor, full of nutrition, and great vitality for your life. So please join in. Thank you.